Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Another day, another plant to discuss. Ito na naman ang inyong hardinerong kapitbahay na sasabing, tara, usap tayo. Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Magandang araw mga puso, kapatid, kapamilya at mga kapitbahay. Akala ko, kapi lang ang 3-in-1. Yun pala, may mga halaman na pwedeng 3-in-1 din naman. So what do I mean by that? Plants that can be used as ornamental, food, and source of medicine. So that plant is called Helminthostachys zeylanica. Okay? So this particular plant is called uh, flowering fern. Kamaraj in English. Tunjuk langit in Malaysia. And in Tagalog, Tukud Langit. So this particular plant is an origin of East Asia, like China, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, New Caledonia, and of course, here in the Philippines. So as you can see, this particular plant or flowering fern is a terrestrial fern with thick and slowly creeping rhizome. So um, it sends up a number of open wide space stems like uh, what you have seen here. So, meron siyang mga malalaking gap ng ating stems. And this actually is a slender type of stems. Where actually, this particular plant can grow up to 15 to 40 centimeters tall. Okay? So, in this case naman kasi, since we are talking about here a fern plant, this is quite unique with other fern. Kasi usually, ang ating mga fern ay meron silang tinatawag na sorus doon sa kanilang underneath ng kanilang dahon. And this particular plant, ang kanilang pinaka-source ng, ng ating spores ay ito, yung kanyang parang flower part niya, na yan. Na kung saan, siya yung nagbaburst out na nagdi-deliver naman ng spores sa uh, true wind. Okay, so yun yung nagdi-deliver ng ating uh, kanitong klase ng plant. This is quite rare actually. Uh, mahirap siyang hanapin. Um, kaya nga, uh, there are some countries in the, in the East Asia that is actually, this particular plant is considered to be um, rare tapos hindi siya masyadong nakikita sa kanilang uh, environment. So, kung madalang na madalang, uh, as you can see. And there are some plants, uh, there are some countries na, na tinuturing ito, na halaman to na endangered na. Like for example, in China. The reason behind that is, this particular plant is being harvested sa wild. And of course, um, dahil nga harvested so wild, nauubos na siya kasi yung kanyang pinaka-plant is actually has many uses. Now, um, aside from that, uh, the environment or the change in the environment can cause also yung kanyang pagiging endangered or yung pagkaubos or pagkawala ng ganitong klase ng specimen. Although here in the Philippines, wala tayo nakikitang um, danger o wala tayo nakikitang uh, problema regarding with this particular plant in terms of its survival. Now, what else? This plant has its rhizomes and that particular rhizomes is actually um, um, used um, as, as, as a source of medicinal okay, plant, uh, material. So, yung iba nga ang ginagawa nila dito, they're going to harvest the rhizomes and they're going and they're sending it to China. Exported it to China para magamit naman at maprocess ng, China, ng Chinese na mga, as, a, as a part of their uh, Chinese medicine. But, this is also grown as a ornamental plant. Okay, so yun yung maganda dito. So, pwede siyang um, going source ng, ng medicinal plant, medicinal uh, cure or anything about the medicine. At saka, meron naman siyang ginaga, or ginagamit din naman siya as a part of ornamental plants. Okay, Helminthostachys zeylanica is actually a rare indigenous species in China as, as what I've told you a while ago. And of course, because of overcollecting in the wild, syempre, at saka, um, dahil nga ginagamit siya as a traditional medicine, at syempre yung change na, or habitat change. Aside from the fact na yung kanyang mga halaman, yung kanyang pinaka-prons, as you can see, maganda ang kanyang tubo, yung kanyang parang, uh, ang kanyang itsura. Okay? So, pansinin natin, di ba, kaya signawang kasama siya dun sa, sa mga part ng ating mga garden, is because of this particular unique characteristics ng kanyang mga dahon. Okay? And actually, yung dahon niya, tinatawag, hindi siya actually leaves, it is actually a prond. Okay, prons. So, it's a leaf-like structure ng ating mga fern plant. Okay? So, um, so we're going to have this one repot. So, 
what else do we have to learn from this particular plant? Okay, so we're going now to talk about the care tips for this one. So, but before that, we're going to uh, repot this one. So, I'm going to use this particular uh, planters na plastic. So, medyo deep yung kanyang material, yung kanyang, kanyang uh, pot para kung saan yung kanyang pinaka rhizomes has more space para mag, uh, tumubo at dumami or lumaki or lumapad pa. And it also encourages yung pagtubo ng marami pang fronts. Okay, so what type of uh, soil this particular plant needs? So let's see kung paano siya inalagaan ng ating mga nung, nung nag-garden or nung pinaka uh, nabira natin. Okay, so we're going to remove this one. So as you can see, this type of plant leaves only on a particular um, soil kung saan light brownish gray type soil and medyo may pagka sandy loam soil texture siya. Okay, pansinin natin. Medyo yung kanyang soil dito, yung kanyang texture ng soil dito ay clumping kung saan nabubuo siya. So what does it tells us? This particular fern loves uh, primarily yung magko-contain siya ng enough water or nag 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 siya, nag absorb siya ng maraming tubig kumbaga. Okay? So in that case, I would suggest to use this particular sandy loam soil. So yun, kita nyo yan, parang brownish in color. So yan yung gagamitin natin sa ating plants. Kasi that is actually uh, the best soil na pwede natin gamitin for this particular plant. Or for this particular fern plant. Okay? So lalagyan mo natin siya ng ating um, loam soil. Now, aside from that, we have to consider also the acidity ng ating soil. So, itong ating kasing uh, plant material na to ay nabubuhay siya na sa 6.5 na acid. So, ibig sabihin, medyo acidic or moderately acidic yung kanyang environment na, na tinutubuan. So, what does it mean also? Most probably kasi mataas ang tinatawag nating um, yung tinatawag nating decomposition process do sa kanyang kin, uh, tinutubuan. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, um, it is actually growing in those uh, very rich soil na medyo acidic yung kanyang environment um, kung saan gumagamit ng mataas na decomposition process. So, syempre, ma, ma, uh, medyo uh, moist yung kanyang environment. So, mataas ang process ng decomposition kung saan, kung, kung kailan, or let's say kung maraming mga dahon na available dun sa environment na yun. Okay? So, yun. Pwede nating tingnan din yung ganong klase ng, ng material. Okay? O nung, nung ganong klase ng, ng concept on how you're going to, to, to repot a particular plant. Okay? By just looking into the type of environment na meron siya. Okay? So, pasin talaga natin. Napaka ano. And as you can see here also, pasin niyo yung ano, yung pinaka roots niya. Okay? So, yun o. Ang ganda ng roots niyo malabas na. So, talagang kailangan na siya ng, ng repotting, kung baga. Okay. So, I'm not going to remove yung mga soil kasi nga, masisira natin yung kanyang natural, um, yung kanyang, yung, yung strength nung kanyang pinaka, ano, yung pinaka, yung pinaka hold niya dun sa, pina, sa lupa. So, we're just going to supply yung additional soil para dito uh, so that it will continue to grow at hindi na tayo magkaroon ng stress pa sa halaman. Now, uh, in terms of watering, like, like what I've said a while ago, this particular plant really loves water. So, ito kasi yung plant na to, um, uh, likes very wet type of soil. Um, then, then the soil should hold uh, water. Actually, saan ba ito nakikita usually? So, yung, ang ating uh, particular plant na to, yung ating flowering fern na to, nakikita siya sa tabi ng ilog actually. So, dun siya talaga nabubuhay kung saan uh, maraming source ng water so pwede siyang uh, mag-survive with that particular condition ng tubig ng ano ng <laughs> ng environment okay so yun yung kanyang pinaka panglaban uh, in that case also medyo marami-rami siyang ano marami-rami siyang uh, tubig na na-absorb with this particular plant now how about the the the, the light okay so paano natin usually kasi ang mga fern kasi ay nasa shaded area. So, similar to other fern plant, ang ating um, fern na to ay um, nabubuhay siya sa mga shaded light. Okay? So, baganda sa talagang ilagay sa loob ng ating bahay. Kasi, uh, sa loob ng ating bahay, hindi masyadong 
na arawan, syempre mga spaces tayo or areas or corners tayo na hindi masyadong nilalagyan or na napupuntahan ng ilaw or ng, ng sinag ng araw. So, this particular plant is ideal to that part. Okay, so pwedeng pwede natin ilagay ito doon. Okay, now, um, in terms of fertilizer, so sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, mataas ang kanilang um, ang kanilang um, requirement in terms of the uh, mga decomposing material. So, more or less, they like uh, organic carbon, organic matter, mga siguro mga 8%. We have also nitrogen component, which is 3%. We have also some phosphorus, which is 6%. At ang pinakamalaki dito, actually, alam nyo kung ano, posp uh, potassium. Okay, potassium, which is 83%. So, ganun siya ka, ka, ka voracious eater or or feeder nung ating tinatawag na na potassium okay so yun yung kanyang diet kumbaga in terms of the fertilizer na kailangan niya sa sa paggrow ng plant natin now uh, if in case na uh, this particular plant kasi meron siyang stages kung saan ay um um yung ating plant kasi may stages kasi siya na, na nawawala siya or nagiging dormant siya especially during the dry season. So nawawala siya. Kaya mahirap talaga hanapin tong plant na to kasi nga nag nag the dormant nag nag pumapasok siya sa dormancy stage niya. Okay. So yun yung yun yung isa sa mga bagay na you have to consider also in growing this particular plant. Akala natin kasi namatay na yung halaman, tapos sa tapo na natin yung pala nasa dormancy stage lamang siya. Now in terms of the propagation, this plant can be propagated through the spores. Ito, spores ito actually. This is a spores. And also, doon sa kanyang uh, uh, parang roots, that is called the rhizomes. Okay? So, that rhizomes could be used as a propagation tool ng ating, mga, ng ating plant na ito. Okay? So, um, so I think um, we are have this particular plant already. So, napakaganda nyo itong ating plant na ito. So, uh, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, this is actually a 3-in-1. So, when I, when, when I said 3-in-1, so, maraming gamit itong plant na to. So, one of those things na pwede natin gamitin dito, yung ating leaves. Yung lang, young leaves nito can be eaten at, and be part of the salad. So, just try to imagine, could be eaten as a raw um, material para kainin. And yung kanyang young pichos, yung bagong tubo niyang mga, mga part na to, could be cooked and dressed and eaten as a substitute for asparagus. So, yung sabihin nga lang nun, very nutritious din kasi yung asparagus as you can see. And also, yung part ng ating um, plant na to, you could eat that one also. Uh, now, the, the, ri the rhizomes could be used as part of the medicine. Okay, of the medicine. So, in that case, um, the, the uh, Zylanica is used as a local scale as food, medicine, and a source of fiber in many countries in Southeast Asia and elsewhere. Its many uses deserve further research on nutritional and medicinal values and on requirements for domestication. So, yun ang kulang sa study regarding with this particular plant. So, ano ba yung mga, mga medicinal purpose na ayon sa pag-aaral nila? So, it has an anti-diabetic. We have anti-cancer for this plant. Meron tayong mga different antioxidants na nakita dito sa halaman na to. Meron tayo dito mga anti-inflammatory. And you could adopt this particular knowledge para gumawa ng different products. Okay? Like for example, pwede kayo gumamit dito or gumawa kayo ng soap. Ng soap na pwedeng pang ano, I don't know how you're going to do that, pero since this particular plant can really give up so many things in terms of the medicinal value, so pwede natin dyan gamitin yung, 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 yung extract niya or how you're going to get it or get the particular nutrition for this plant. So pwedeng pwede. Pero syempre, we have to learn how to grow, how to um, domesticate or how to um, plant and grow this particular plant for that particular purpose. So, if I were you, I'd rather look for a possibility na siya ay mag-grow natin at maparami natin sa ating, not only in our garden, but also doon sa ating um, mga farm para mas marami siyang, ma ma maraming benefits tayo makuha sa kanya. Okay? So, I think that's all, folks. Um, uh, happy planting for this particular plant and looking for other things na pwede nating magamit or pwede nating uh, gawin sa ating mga halaman. Hindi lang siya for ornamental, 
hindi lang siya pang pagkain, syempre, pwede din siya sa medicinal purposes. And that is what it means to say na magandang maghalaman, especially kung maraming benefits tayo makukuha, aside from being an ornamental plant. Okay? So, again, you're watching Planting with Epin Grace. Please watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to visit our Epi page, si Mare Gracia at ang Lihim na Hardin. See you again next time for another planting session. And goodbye.